changed quite a bit and there's snow on the ground anyways we're gonna go up and have a look okay so here we are um, we'll get out and we'll go have a look Okay, so it's a little bit hard to uh, get a bit of time here without people using the, the, the spring. So I've just been waiting for 10 minutes or so for people to finish filling up and there's several cars behind me over there. And uh, uh, yeah, so obviously I'm here by myself. Bill isn't with me, but he was a little while ago. I'll show you some of that footage. And you can see over my shoulder, he points to it in some of that footage as well way back there I'll stay on this side of you huh? I'll stay on this side of you over there is uh, the Oral Moraine and that's where the water sort of goes down and filters down and goes underground over here and this well actually uh, uh, comes up from 200 feet or so below the surface so we're going to have a closer look here Okay, one for you. And uh, yeah, it's easy, it's easy and well here. here. This flows continually. There's no power source, it's just pressure from under the ground that brings it up. And uh, it goes off above the water crest right down there. Sample that last time we were here. It's delicious. All right. All right, ready to roll. Yeah. So, Adam, you called this a pump house. This is an artesian spring. This water is under pressure. There is no pump, it just flows all the time. And uh, the well depth here is approximately 200 feet. So underneath our feet, where we're standing, is at least 200 feet of sediment. So there is a layer of lake sediment, a layer of glacial sediment, another layer of lake sediment, another layer of glacial sediment, another layer of lake sediment, another layer of glacial sediment, three successions. And the water is coming from that aquifer at 200 feet. And the source of the water is the moraine to the east. That's the recharge area. So we're sitting here in the Elmdale clay plain. Very impermeable lake sediments, fine grain, silt, and clay. The source of the water are those hills to the east. The sand and the gravel, the water permeates very quickly through that. And because the elevation is higher there than here, this water is under pressure. So, Adam, if you have a look at the refill time, I take my beautiful little Elmvale Water Festival bottle, dishwasher safe, reusable, non-toxic polypropylene, and check out the filling time. There's our bottle of water. Ah, and that is really good water. So Canadian well drilling built this beautiful installation that you see here. This is all surgical stainless steel. And now three people can fill up at one time. Very good. And Adam, one other thing I can add is this water is not being wasted when it runs out of here. This water is flowing into the Y River, so this clean, cold spring water
water is improving water quality in the Y River. So you can imagine the drainage that we're getting, surface runoff from our roads, from our farms, empties into the river, but this helps to maintain the quality of the water in the river by diluting it with nice, clean, fresh spring water. started to ask me about organic contaminants in these waters because it is an agricultural area. A colleague in Switzerland, Daniel Berse, he's a specialist for organic contaminants in groundwater. He sent me special ground glass bottles that were degreased, that were baked in the oven, sealed. He sent them here. I sampled all the waters, including that artesian flow at the side of the road in Elmville shipped it all to Switzerland. He analyzed everything for a long list of parameters, so common herbicides, etc., etc., hydrocarbons, the whole nine yards. Not only could he not measure anything, he could not detect anything. And he said, Bill, I've never before seen such a clean, clean spring water. <music> understand the sulfur smell you have to understand the geology so in our aquifer we have sand and that sand includes not only minerals derived from the rocks of the Canadian Shield but we also have calcium carbonate from limestone but we also have calcium sulfate and it's a naturally occurring mineral and it has a, a limited solubility and we will have in this water dissolved calcium, dissolved magnesium, we'll have carbonate or bicarbonate and we will have sulfate from that water, uh, from that mineral. And because the water is anoxic, which means the groundwater contains no dissolved oxygen, we will have the reduced form of sulfate which is hydrogen sulfide, and it gives it that sulfur smell. And if the water is simply left exposed to the air, that hydrogen sulfide will oxidize back to sulfate, and that smell will disappear. So, Adam, this is called Ego 3. And this is our third dedicated groundwater sampling well. And uh, this well, as I said, 60 meters, 65 meters, 195 feet, roughly. Um, I've forgotten the exact number. And uh, the entire well is constructed exclusively of surgical stainless steel. This is 316 stainless steel to minimize any contamination from the well. But you notice the water is flowing, and it's always flowing, it never stops. Again, there's no pump here. This is an artesian flow system. Now, I know that um, some government agencies don't sample from flowing wells, they sample from standing water but standing water in a pipe of whatever material is going to contain contaminants leached from that pipe. So what we're trying to do here in my studies is to look at the chemical composition of the water and not the contamination from the pipe. So it's very important for me to sample from a flowing artesian well. So we're just very lucky that here in this region we have an abundance of flowing artesian wells and as I said this one is dedicated for water testing. Now what we found from experience is and I've been doing I've been analyzing this water now for more than 25 years and in terms of analyzing trace metals in the water I've been doing that for more than 15 years 
And what I've learned from experience, the trace metal levels in this water are so low that our biggest source of contamination is actually the ambient air that we're breathing. So even though we're in the countryside in southern Ontario, every cubic foot of air has at least a million particles in it um, on the order of half a micron or below. And these can affect our chemical analyses. So what we've designed and built, this was designed and built by Tommy Nuremberg at my lab at the University of Alberta. This is what's called a laminar flow clean air cabinet. So this is a HEPA filter. So there's a small fan inside blowing the air in through a HEPA filter. So inside this clean air cabinet, there are zero particles. And we know that because we have a handheld laser particle counter and we've actually done the particle counts. So what I do is I have a special um, plastic bottle, a polypropylene bottle, and this bottle has been cleaned in our laboratory at the University of Alberta. It's an ultra clean laboratory called the Swamp Lab for testing trace metals in soil, water, air, manure, plants. In our ultra clean lab, we clean the bottles very carefully in nitric acid. And this is nitric acid that we distill twice in a quart still. So very clean acid is used to clean our bottles. And each bottle is then packed in two plastic bags. And then I bring them here. And then I open up this bottle to collect the water inside the clean air cabinet. And uh, I'll just show you how that, how that works. So I'm wearing clean lab clothing and a hairnet to protect my water samples from contamination. And I put on some plastic gloves. And these are, these are great gloves. These are shoulder length plastic gloves. So I really don't need to wear the clean lab jacket, but I do it just to be safe. Okay, so now I'm ready to do my sampling within the clean air cabinet. So again, imagine that this bottle cleaned very carefully in nitric acid, packed in two Ziploc bags. I bring it inside the clean air cabinet, and then I open the bottle. So I have no ambient air particles coming into my water sample, and then I fill up my my bottle here at this uh, at this well and we've adjusted the flow rate because this water is flowing all the time so that it's just enough for our water testing and we're not wasting water so we do think about water conservation and the excess flow goes to the Y River okay so then we close this bottle Again, we're closing it within the clean air cabinet. Okay, and then I bring it out of the clean air cabinet. I close this in two plastic Ziploc bags, and I ship that in a cool box to the University of Alberta for testing. And our results show that this water contains on the order of one part per trillion of lead. Now, to put that into perspective, Lake Huron is approximately a trillion liters. If you took one liter of water and put that into Lake Huron, that would be one part per trillion. So this water contains approximately a part per trillion of lead. To put that number into perspective, the cleanest ice layers from the Canadian Arctic, between 5,000 and 8,000 years old, contain five parts per trillion of lead. So this water coming out of the ground contains five times less lead than the cleanest ice from the Canadian Arctic that's thousands of years old. And the reason for that is the filtration that's taking place in our soils. So soil after oxygen and water is our single most important natural resource 
It's the basis of our civilization. It's the basis of our agricultural food system, but it's also Mother Nature's perfect water sampling device, or sorry, water filtration device. And it's the reason why our water, it's the main reason why our water is, is so clean. And again, all of that filtration is taking place in the hills to the east, the Oro, Oro Moraine. 